Hey everyone, I'm Will and welcome back to Woodpine Woodworks. Today I want to talk about getting organized, specifically about building shelves. We're here in my basement and I had this bit of wall space that had nothing on it and I really wanted to get things cleaned up. So I sat down with a pencil and paper and I sketched out what I thought I wanted and then I built some shelves and I want to take you on that journey today. So here we go. All right, in the last picture, you saw that I started with a hand sketch and I went and just tried to figure out the overall area that I was working with. And I took that hand sketch and I brought it into SketchUp, which is a, a 3D modeling tool. <clears throat> and I created a, I guess, a, a, re a rendering of the shelves I wanted to build. And let's talk about kind of what we have going on here. So to begin with, I had to start with the overall width. So from here to here is about 12 feet. This is the space I had to work with. <clears throat> the overall height I had to the bottom of the joist was uh, just under seven feet. So the overall height of the shelves here is about six feet, just under that. So I had a working envelope. And then based on that, <clears throat> I decided to go in and start thinking about how I wanted to space the shelves. And that was really a function of just the stuff that I had to put in there. And so I wanted the bottom rung of shelves uh, down here to have a little bit taller spacing than the rest. This ended up being around 20 inches. <clears throat> and then the rest of the shelves, the spacing in between, had to be 14 inches. And I did that based on the things that I wanted to store. Uh, so based on those measurements, plus the measurements of my materials, I figured out the spacing, and that's how I arrived at this design. Now the design is efficient in the sense that I tried to use off-the-shelf materials the best I could, so eight-foot boards, uh, without any kind of special cuts and uh, in order to do that uh, and, and then try to maximize you know each each individual sheet of plywood I use two four foot by eight foot uh, sheets of plywood for this half inch thick ply <clears throat> and then the rest of the assembly was built with one by twos and one by threes again just really simple off-the-shelf stuff and uh, a couple of other things to, to maybe to point out here is that in a 12 foot run so this this piece of plywood right here on top this is eight feet and then this is four feet, and then I have eight feet and four feet. And I made sure uh, to the, the, the seams here and here and here didn't overlap uh, because basically I want to kind of, uh, uh, you know, spread the load out across the shelf as much as I could and <clears throat> not have any kind of uh, problems worrying about these shelves holding the things that I want to put on them. Now, some people may say, you know, one by twos and one by threes, you know, is that strong enough? And for example, uh, this this right here is a one by two, and then the, the vertical parts are one by threes. Uh, you get your strength from the distance this way. So sometimes people want to build these shelves out of two by fours, or or maybe even something bigger, and that's fine. You can do that. I personally think it's overkill for the the kind of stuff that I'm uh, going to store. So in my experience building these shelves, you know, for a few different applications now, this is more than enough for the things that I need to store. That's why I chose one by one by twos for the uh, horizontal pieces to make up the shelves, and one by threes here for the vertical pieces. And then <clears throat> there's some style points uh, if you can, because I used uh, and you'll see I used pocket hole uh, joinery for all of this, uh, so you can see on here I modeled in the pockets. If you can get the pocket holes facing all the same way, and I say facing away from the primary way that uh, you know the end user is going to see this thing. That's what I'm calling style points. Um, I didn't get that, if we're being totally honest. <clears throat> I flipped a couple of them around, but this is some of the forethought you may want to put into the design itself. So really simple. Uh, this this uh, 3D model allowed me to kind of explore and play with the spacing uh, and, and get this to a place where I could be as efficient as I could. And then one last point before we leave this, this model is um, the depth of the shelves. So again, trying to be efficient, trying to use materials in, in the most efficient way I could. In order to take two full 4 by 8 sheets of plywood and maximize the usage here, um, I arrived at a, a depth or a depth of 16 inches for the shelves. And again, this, uh, this was fine for the stuff that I wanted to store. <clears throat> I played around with 12 inches uh, at one point, but decided that was just not deep enough. And so by choosing this, I was able to 
maximize the yield out of my plywood and maximize the, the storage space that I was able to, to put in place. So these are some of the things you'd want to think about as you're laying out your project. And then uh, if you want to give yourself a little bit of a, a hand here, when you're ripping the plywood, uh, you can try to rip this exactly at 16 inches if you want, but you have to take into account the curve or the width of the blade uh, as you're ripping these sheets of plywood down. So what I would do is set my target width uh, of a plywood rip to 15 and 7 eighths, uh, maybe 15 and 3 quarters, and give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. That way you know if you build this shelf out such that the distance from here to here is 16 inches. When you lay that piece of plywood down, you have a little bit of tolerance, a little bit of slop right there. I mean, go ahead and make it as exact as you want to, <clears throat> but my experience is if you, know, you have really long runs and you're doing this with a circular saw and a straight edge guide, you, know, you want to be as, as careful as you can and give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. So uh, that's it for the design part. Now let's, let's look at how we actually built these things. So the build process begins by breaking down the sheet goods. Here I'm ripping the half inch plywood into 15 and 7 eighths inch wide strips. I only have a single rail for my track saw, so I have to do this in sections. And it's 15 and 7 eighths instead of 16 because I want to leave myself a little bit of wiggle room in the end. And I want to maximize the number of pieces I can get out of a single sheet of plywood. After the sheet goods are broke down, I'm going to cut all the web frame pieces for the shelving. These are the pieces that go underneath the plywood. Here I'm breaking down the pieces into big chunks, and then I set a stop block on my miter gauge, and I just cut all the pieces to the same length. Just rinse and repeat over and over. Next come pocket holes. I chose these because they're quick and easy. And I use the B and C holes in my Craig jig just to put the holes close together into the 1x2s. Once you get your pocket hole jig set up, now it's just time to rinse and repeat. Here I'm using an electric drill because it's, well, more powerful than my battery powered drill and my batteries aren't, don't last that long anymore. And I find it nice and easy to use. And then you just kind of get in a groove and knock them all out. Here are the materials all cut up, pre-cut, ready to go, stacked up, ready to go into the house. And from this point, I gather up the fasteners I need. In this case, I'm going to use inch and a quarter drywall screws to attach the plywood to the shelf frame itself. And then just regular pocket hole screws. Uh, I'm going to use the coarse thread ones because this is all white pine. So I pack up my fasteners, get whatever clamps I need. Get my drills, load it up, head from the shop into the basement. Before I started doing any assembly, I gave everything a good vacuum, just a good clean. And then once everything was cleaned up, started assembling what I'm calling the web frames. These are the, the frames that are the shelves themselves. So I just use a couple of clamps. I put these spacers roughly two feet on center. Just get everything nice and square and lined up. Shoot the pocket holes. And then just kind of keep going. And I built these in sections. Keep in mind each shelf is 12 feet long. So I have an 8 foot section. And a 4 foot section. And so I just built these all up. And then you'll see how I assemble them together in a minute. You just take your time here. Make sure everything's nice and square. And uh, just assemble them as you would any other uh, pocket hole joinery. So here I've got the web frames all assembled in their individual pieces. Now I just lay them out and I uh, add the little splice pieces that puts each one together. Notice how I'm staggering the joints. So one shelf to the next. I don't want all the joints in line because that's basically saying break here. So I try to space them out and alternate them every other one. And so to do this, I had to get creative with my little assembly table and just clamp stuff to the table and add these little spacer joints. Nothing fancy here. I'm just using drywall screws and clamping them together. I did add a little bit of glue just for some extra, I guess, uh, insurance. Don't know that it's necessary, but it's there. And 
and this is what those little joints look like individually. So I just added a little splice. These were just offcuts I had laying around from uh, when I cut the pieces originally. So nothing fancy here, just making it work, making sure it's structurally sound. After I get all the shelves assembled, I bring the plywood over and I start to put the plywood on top of each web frame assembly. And here I'm using a countersink bit, which is one of my favorite bits ever. I'll put a link to this uh, at some point here. Uh, so countersink all my screws and then just shoot them in. And I'm staying away from where the, uh, in, the in the video, the vertical supports. You can see I just kind of offset the screws not to, to make sure they don't land right on the joint. And just work your way down. Uh, the screw placement doesn't have to be exact. Uh, you get style points if you make them uniform. And then um, after that, get all of them done. And then we start to get ready for assembly. To assemble these things in place, I had to use clamps and a little bit of ingenuity. So I stand the uprights together and I'm screwing these things into the floor joists on the back side and the front side just freestanding. So I've got some quick clamps and a couple of levels and I just kind of go nice and slow, nice and easy and get everything in place, making sure to check for level, check for square as I go. And just make sure my spacing is right. I want 14 inches of total clearance in between each shelf. And this again is for my stuff. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned a little something. And I hope you can take some of what you saw today and adopt it for your own project, for your organization. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.